Wadau, kama mnavojua, kila mtu wapa Kenya migrated from a specific area. So the Kalenjin people are descendants of migrants from the River Nile. Okay? How I say walitoka hizo side za Sudan and part of Ethiopia. The Kalenjin are actually believed to have migrated from South Sudan to their current location around 2,000 years ago. I'm sure most of us, actually all of us were born. So 2,000 years ago, even they were immigrated to Kenya and actually to their specific location right now. Until the 1950s, how I say, walikuwa bado wanajulikana kama the Nandi speakers. But according to history, the administrators and scholars by then decided to name them the term Kalenjin. Around 1960, jina. Wadao, how I say, ni wengi. According to our last population census, 2019, the Kalenjin speakers were the third, ranked third in Kenya. Ilikuwa wakikuyu, then the Luyas, and now the Kalenjin and they were coming in at a big number of 6.35 million. Manze, your number is kubwa. Kama vile nimesema, kitambo walikuwa nita the Nandi speakers. Within now the current Kalenjin, kuna other smaller tribes, smaller clans, people that speak almost similar languages but totally different. Kuna wa Kipsigis, kuna wa Nandi, kuna wa Tugen, kuna wa Keio, kuna wa Pokot, kuna wa Marakwet, wa Sabaot. Alafu finally, Kuna terik. Kwa hizo tribes zote, of course, kuna ile major kabisa. So the main tribe kwa wakalenjin are actually the Kipsigis. Wadau, kila mtu wanashanga hawa se labda walikuwa naanza kuishi vipi. Those people lived in thatched houses, ambazo zilikuwa zikona sticks, and then they were spiral-like. Hizo nyumba bado zilikuwa zina ukujuzi kishai kwa the grass, the thatched grass, eh? Uku round ina changanishwa mud na cow dung. Similar almost to the Maasai tribe, yeah, and other tribes I'm sure here back in Kenya have used the same way to make their dwellings. Traditionally, the basic unit of political organization were actually known as the correct. Correct. K-O-R-E-T. I hope I'm actually pronouncing these words right. So kama we ni mkalena uko hapo hivyo uneza nisaidia na pronunciation of these words because I would really want to be pronouncing them kwa sabu story yao ni refu after we are done with introduction. The correct was actually made of 20 to 100 homesteads that were living together and their leadership was also known as the coquet. Kwa kila correct kulikuwa na a leader, kuna ule spokesman. So, katika hii hi area, like where there is around 20 to 100, kulikuwa na one person that was leading them. And this particular person was also known as Poyot Arab Kokwet. So, wadau, during all meetings, Uyu po, Poyot ndia likuwa anakubaliwa kuongea first. He's the leader. So ye ndia likuwa anaanzisha story ndio the rest would follow. But that doesn't mean every other um, person that was sitting in that kikao had nothing to say ama thought yake was not counted. No. He was just the one to begin the meeting and also end the meeting. But in between kwa kila sitting kulikuwa na yo could decide and make decisions pamoja. Yani kwa kila kokwet tuseme kumekuwa na issue alafu vile saizi nyumba kumi kabla ufike kwa police station siku na ile nyumba kumi. so kwa hiyo nyumba kumi, huyo poyot ndiye anaanzisha kwanza maongezi anasema kama kuna issue ama kama kuna agenda yeyo siku alafu after that ndio sasa wazee wengine katika hiyo kikao sasa wanachangia alafu yeye ndio bado anafunga miti. sasa yeye ndio boss yeye ndio kusema sasa how are Kalenjin? Uh, they have several languages within their, their, uh, their, their main category. Kama Wanandi na Wakipsigis, now they speak a similar dialect known now as the Kalenjin. The Talai and Endo people, they speak totally, a totally different dialect. Alafu kuna sasa wale wanaungea, Kipokot, Kisabaot, alafu kuna wale Tugen. So all of those people are still under the same bracket known as the Kalenjin speakers. Well, Wadao. Kwa kila community kuna that spiritual being and the Kalenjin people actually believe in God. They call him Asis or Cheptalel and he is represented in the form of the sun. Alafu sasa beneath Asis kuna Elat ambayo ndiyo anakontrol lightning na thunder. So God yaya ni the sun and then there is someone beneath him who actually controls lightning and thunder. Well, Kila culture ina kuanga na mambo yake. So the spirits also known, uh, you know, the spirits of the dead also known as Oyik are actually there. The Kalenjin believe that those, those spirits are there. And these spirits can actually be appeased by sacrifices of either meat, 
and, and beer or just meat lakini lazima kukwe na kuchinja ndio kwa peace now the spirits hiyo beer yenye wana serve now the spirits kwa peace inaitwa koros again the kalenjins actually believe in diviners they are known as are orkoik these are the diviners that you know can can control the rain can can pray or intercede on behalf of the Kalenjin community to the God about rains kama kuna long droughts, kuna famine, stuff like that. Those now are the diviners that they believe in and they are also called Orkoik. Aya wadao, kuna ile patu inabambanga kila mtu. Saya nja. The Kalenjin people have a staple food known as ugali and mursik and i'm sure most of you have heard of mursik or you have heard or seen the calabashes that the, the kalenjins use well mursik is milk that has been fermented in a calabash that has a burning stick when a clean nayo your calabash then they will add the milk inside it it will be kept for some time then it is served chilled. When it is in your glass, you'll realize the milk is actually blackish. It has some bits of charcoal. That is what we call mursik. And I'll make sure I will visit my neighbor and learn how to make mursik. So that in your letter show about how to prepare mursik at home. Well, Wadao, when you hear the word kalenjin, what do you think about? Personally, I'm thinking of Kipchoge. You know, na wanatu mtu wanatoka ka lightning. Sure, mbio. The Kalenjin people are very well known for their athletic, you know, ability. Here in Kenya, we, we, they, when there's marathon around the world, you'll always hear of a Kalenjin somewhere. And trust you me, they make a lot of countries, you know, jealous of us. Because those people can actually really, really run. And to add to that, the Kalenjin people are also known to be very loud when it comes to politics. You know, uh, like our current president, when I started my story, I said is from the Kalenjin community president, His Excellency William Samuel Ruto, comes from that particular um, community. And also the late Jose, you know, our own Arab Moy came from the same, same place. So unajua wada ukisha una watu wakubu wawili, you know that that community, how it is angry when it comes to politics. Hiya! I believe I've taken my time to take you through the Kalenjin community, their origin to Kenya, and how they live. Now, I want you to join Kaulele TV because we have just started touching on Kalenjin community. I'm sure you want to know more. And only here at home, Kaulele, is where you will get every story about the Kalenjin community. So join Kaulele next time as we bring a story about circumcision, traditional circumcision in the Kalenjin community. Do not miss out Wadao. Manze story ni moto moto. I'm sure all of us want to learn about these things. It's been a wonderful time. It's been awesome, you know, narrating this particular origin because I know kuna story in a circumcision. Manze always take up miss. It's been a wonderful time. It's me, your host. I've had fun. By the way, kama badu huja subscribe mkaulele. Manze una miss is vitu sana. Kindly go and subscribe to my page and do not forget to like, share, comment and also it is good to hit the notification bell so that each time I do an upload, manze una kuomestuliwa. Otherwise, have an amazing time and see you again soon back to do Kalenjin circumcision. Peace!